hello. It looks like it's just me for now. <laughs> Chris is a doing something, but he will be a joining us in a minute. So, this week, what we're talking about is family feuds, but we're not really talking so much about the actual family feuds and falling out with members of your family and your friends and that. We don't really care as much about that. This ain't going to be a counselling session, don't worry about that. What we're actually going to be talking about is really when you're using magic to deal with things like that. So, family feuds. I don't know whether it's a case of you've got various people falling out with each other or there's something going on with friends anything like that ethics of when would you use magic to deal with that and what magic would you use to deal with that so we could go off on a tangent in many 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 different areas when we're talking about this kind of a thing but whether it's a case of you want to use magic to mess about with a situation say for example you've got you know a little bit of a uh sick kind of uh um you get a sick pleasure from making people fall out with each other and then uh you know apple a discord type thing so are you using magic to make family members fall out at christmas because it's entertaining or are you using it to get them back together again so basically are we talking about mediation or what exactly are we talking about so uh chris are you there yeah, man. He's there. Whew. So I was just introducing a little bit about what we're kind of talking about in terms of family feuds. But I think what's best really is just to throw a couple of scenarios out there. So in terms Sounds of good. using magic for dealing with problems with family and friends and that, have you ever really done that? Ooh. Would you know anyone that has? And how did it work out? <laughs> Specifically flu feuds or family drama mm, family in drama. general. Christmas, as we call it. Well, yeah, Christmas is family drama for me. Um, no, I, well, not for me personally. Um, obviously, I've had clients that have wanted to settle disputes, but not necessarily on a greater magical mm. Um basis kind of not kind of blood flu feuds or anything um but kind of the little stuff opening communications uh those sorts of things if that's what you're getting at well the thing with family and that is if if, in, if it's a stranger say someone that's picking on your sister for example or your brother and it's a stranger you might not think twice about uh, doing a little bit of baneful magic on them screwing them over or whatever it is but what if there's another family member so say you've got one family member picking on another now from an ethical perspective because they're technically your family you might love them both so yeah. you know you may feel like well i don't really want to hex that person normally i just hex the shit out of them and then curse them because it's my family i'm not going to be cursing their entire bloodline or their family because i'm part of that family <laughs> you know so exactly and that would have in terms uh... <laughs> of that kind of thing what was that <laughs> i think because that would have negative impact on yourself obviously you're not yeah. going to consider that unless you're in your little shelter and it's just affecting other members of the family but it's really when it's kind of a delicate a delicate thing because i think as a witches we often get a bit of a reputation for well let's just go and fuck them up <laughs> but actually yeah. when you want to not do anything particularly nasty to the person that is causing the trouble that is when it, it takes a you need to be a little bit more delicate at it because a bit not more only controlled. have you got the perspective of you don't want a direct kind of punch attack but also you might chance doing a spell or some magical work on someone you don't know or care about and you don't really care so much if it backfires but if it's someone you do care mm -hmm. about you don't really want to test stuff out either no. do you? you want to be sure that it's no. going to work so well. There's a few members of my family I probably would. Yeah, so in terms of um, fixing family feuds and angry things at Christmas, most of the time 
you kind of fall into two camps, I think. You're either going to be the person that wants them to sort through their issues, or you're the yeah. person that's going to force them to sort through their issues. So is it the kind of, if we translate it to love spells, because I did a love spell video on the YouTube channel, on the Thoth TV YouTube channel, so oh, yeah. I've got a love on the mind at the moment. The difference is the person that, are you the person that is forcing a specific person to fall in love with you, or are you the person that's making the right sort of environment in order to attract that sort of love? Yeah. So if you've the got right set angry of people, circumstances. Yeah, if you've got angry people at Christmas and there's a feud, are you getting your little puppet dolls out and putting forks in people's heads to make them think, no, I really do love Auntie Julie and Uncle George. I really do love them, really type thing putting it in someone's head or are you casting not necessarily a glamour but evoking in and pulling in calming energy so almost like mood control and stuff like that you don't really hear much about mood control that much we hear about glamour magic and that but this is a subtler kind of a magic a sacred space as it were <laughs> So what about that? What yeah. would you choose? Well, I don't think people. a lot of people think about it. Mm. I don't think a lot of people think about the idea of manipulating the energy in the room in order to be at your best. So with those, it's kind of temperature control a lot of the time is, um, you know, making sure that the, uh, the, the weather is a changing in the room. So, you know, it is that kind of getting used to manipulating energy um, or sensing changes that you can then preempt. So, you know, if you've got particular volatile members of the family that, uh, you know, will be triggered and you hear one of their triggers and then you're kind of like, OK, I've got a few seconds to react. Otherwise, this isn't going to go well and nobody's having turkey like with those sorts of situations the mediation uh, that can be done energetically speaking without like you say i don't think people think about that as creating sacred space that kind of setting up of that energy field ready to either detect things that you're going to have to diffuse or kind of to make changes as they're happening already yeah well Catherine Veronica, yes, Liam's have got a love on his mind tonight. Apparently so. I'm glad that you find that amusing. But I've been mm. doing a bit of the love magic lately, so I'm all mellow and calm and that. So, you know, mm. I don't always have to be like angry Gordon Ramsley style on everyone's ass. I can be a nice and a peaceful and a tranquil. So. If you're at Christmas, Chris, assuming you decide to show up to Christmas with the family and you don't just avoid it all like I do normally, and a fight breaks out and they're all very angry and they all break off into their little tribes, the little parts of the family, and you're kind of torn between, do I go with them, do I go with them? Because you've got to pick a side, because if you don't pick a side, both of them will hate you. So what do you do there? Do you do a little you know sleeping spell do you make them fall asleep so that they wake up peacefully <laughs> or what because when it comes to the sacred space most people are usually thinking about sacred spaces you clear the area of energy to pull something in all of that wiccan circle casting stuff you know that kind of thing but actually you're talking about creating an atmosphere there so you're not necessarily pulling in energy what you're doing is you're kind of projecting out and filling the room or the area with a particular emotion or concept so how would you say that kind of differs from in terms of if i wanted to pull in an element elemental magic like fire or something like that or water versus pulling in some sort of calm or emotion or something like that how would it work kind of symbolically in your mind and what approach would you kind of take or take someone through to do that so with mine it would probably be uh, with my family it would be kind of turning yourself into um the cocktail maker so it would be drinks is what would pull all the all of those energies in from different places um, and that would be kind of a cauldron working 
kind of situation where you're putting in that energy i'm not saying getting them drunk i'm saying a a first a first treat you know that first drink of breaking the ice that's what would happen there so um it would be a case of raising energy within a space but the right kind of energy so for me it's normally warmth that's what i go to when creating a space so for me it might just be lighting a couple of candles um or you know if that's in my space it would be there are a couple of candles about that are strategically placed at all times um ready for any any situation needing to change so you know um obviously as you well know all the candles in my house tend to be red regardless of the situation so uh, again warmth is what i'm going for there um Does and they have certain turn into rage do those red candles Sorry. turn into lava and anchor though well, they can do <laughs> but obviously it depends i i have control of my candles in my space um whereas you know someone else's space that's different what you're having to do is take that energy that's available so you know christmas is at mom's this year kind of thing um you need to know one know that space well enough to kind of be able to take control of that space it's hard which can be hard to do when that's not your space if you're not particularly good at changing energies um so for this is is you know transmutation of energy is what you're trying to do here um so you know moving that energy around a lot of the time it's just creating flow i know that sounds like a really new agey thing for me to say but what i mean is is kind of like that there is energy coming in and out people think that sometimes when you're building a space you're flooding that space with an energy that can be smothering if there is no kind of input output valves for you to actually let some of that out if you've got a room full of angry people so if we're going back to people have gone off in rages um then you're not going to want warmth in that sense what you what i mean is warmth as in comfort safe are the warmths i'm referring to but you're wanting to have that energy change that the the air is clear that's what you're wanting to do in that situation you're wanting to clear the air we don't do that in a locked space you do that by opening windows and it flowing on through like so it's those kind of visualizations that i'm talking about is that kind of exchange of fresh energy coming in dirty energy going out that kind of you know um mr miyagi kind of wax on wax off situation is what you're wanting with negative energy yes so i i think it's more really the approach that you're taking is linked more to common sense and Mm -hmm. to practical mundane thinking than to magic because we're not talking about pretending we're going Mm -hmm. to the court toilet and actually sneaking off upstairs lighting a candle cackling in it staying in chanting for over hours what we're really talking about is okay what environment are we in not going too much feng shui in that, but literally a case of, okay, mm-hmm. I can feel and sense there's a buildup of energy and tension here. If I open that door there into the hallway, and if I open the doors there that lead out to the dining room and kitchen, then I have got an energy. You can flow. pull that and direct that energy through. But at the same time, what have you got to hand? So Chris, obviously you've got candles and you're taking, you're doing a little bit of candle magic. But for someone that doesn't have candles and things like that, is it a case of, oh, okay, if I bond with, because I like me essential oils and I normally diffuse essential oils, am I picking some essential oils and things that I know will ease the tension of that? If you want to kick things up past your general aromatherapy and looking up in a book what the book says for, you know, calmness and relaxing, you're really thinking, okay, let me sample a couple of these oils and smell them which ones want kind of using that plant our eyes like how you select ingredients for spells and that what can help with this situation i need you know talk to your ingredients at hand your things what is it food what have you got here what is your psychic i believe what is your unconscious mind telling you to do where what direction are you being pulled into not so much a stereotypical magic of you know cackling over a cauldron type thing 
if you had a family of witches that might just do it if you brought the old cauldron down and started a cackling might diffuse the tension if you did any that. anything going to sacrifice a small child like obviously otherwise what's the point of bringing witches yeah. together but but a lot of this as well is really when it comes to that sort of off the cusp really i think it is control of other people and their moods and that kind of thing that's you've got to have some sort of ability and have developed some sort of ability mm -hmm. to do that so it's going to go over the heads of a lot of people because they're not really going to be able to do that but getting them to think mm -hmm. along that process i think helps so let's yeah. go for something that is a little bit more fancy which is not too new aging so think about this we're talking family fusion we're talking about anger we're talking about really at the heart of it working on or using magic on people that we care about that are on our immediate family and friends so do you have a sibling with severe depression that is a pushing you away and pushing everyone else away and has locked themselves in their house and is refusing to talk to anyone you can't physically go there magic might be a good way of actually helping that situation so with that situation what's our kind of route to attack from a beginner's perspective we've got someone that's kind of locked up in their castle in their own area you know how depression is that kind of feeds on like a forest fire and just gets worse and worse and worse how can we do that sort of magic and help with that from a distance okay here we're talking kind of avoiding what we've done before we've discussed before on other channels but um is the the danger that people go straight to which is throwing energy willy-nilly at a healing situation so people go oh you know well she just needs some some love and light well if you're in an abyss and there is no way you can possibly see light where's that light going to just disappear to is it's going to just disappear into the abyss so at that point you're directing light energy at something that actually you know is just going to absorb it it's going to be eclipsed by the darkness that is already there obviously we're generalizing and you you know you have to be careful generalizing about mental health but obviously what we're trying to say is in that moment what is the most likely part what you should be working on but if it's a, a family member you're going basically wanting to put breadcrumbs out to get them in your direction it's not going to be necessarily that you're going to be able to fix the problem because you not might not be what's necessary to fix the problem uh, for that uh, you know for that family member what you're wanting them to do is engage so in that point what you're trying to do is establish a connection between you two um so that's that's more a case of about sending uh, the sorts of flares over that kind of say you know we're here like come on your own terms um but establish re-establishing that link a lot of the time uh within traditional witchcraft and folk magic and that that link's normally made symbolically so with a lot mm -hmm. of old-fashioned charms and um spells and that that link's made symbolically. I think I'm going to sneeze, but I've got that kind of feeling like I want to sneeze, but I can't. That's, That's fine. Annoying. Um, so if you were to do that from a depression perspective, the first thing you always want to do, I think, with any sort of healing magic and that is to understand what it is you're healing, understand the condition, yeah. the ailments, that kind of thing. So with depression, it is like a thick fog and a bit, like you kind of said, of negativity, essentially. And it's negativity that is kind of paralyzing i think depression is a kind of a paralyzing thing you can't even when you've got someone depressed and they're in bed they're not going up to have a shower they might need the toilet they're not even feeling like oh, i just can't i just don't have the strength to do that it is literally a paralyzing stuck there thing like you said chris firing positivity at them isn't really going to do a lot but that negativity that depression is emanating from them a lot of the time because it's to a certain extent it's the psychological or you're talking you know mm -hmm. mental health so really instead of firing happiness at them which might not help what about using some sort of a sponge spell to pull that to pull that away mm -hmm. so whether it's the case of 
what are you doing? Are you burning up that negativity? Are you burning up that thing? You're doing a little bit of fire magic. You like burning things in the cold, and maybe. So you might make a candle or something like that that you link. You link that candle to that depression. If you've got depression as then you think of it as a nasty skull and you burn that and you pull that and, you know, interact with that candle to try and pull through and burn up, that depression, that helplessness, that kind of energy, there's a lingering and oozing, essentially, when I see it with depression, when I see people with depression, mm -hmm. the energy oozes out. It's almost like sweat and it oozes out of their pores. You can tell it's not really coming from other places. It's really just emanating from them. So sponge type spells, I prefer to that. Now, you might get through a lot of very expensive candles doing that. But what you could do is you could use the old clamp thing where you bond what you're trying to pull out and grow because plants grow don't they and plants will grow and feed on something so when it comes to healing magic particularly whether it's you know with depression or whether it's a physical ailment then healing magic and something that grows and feeds on that thing can be quite good so if you've got some nasty plant that you grow maybe it's something you don't particularly like some gross plant not a nice happy house plant but something what sage and disgusting get a little seed of that or get a little off cut or get a little something small of that and then feed it and link that thing to the depressed person and the depression and as that grows it should link to obviously you're feeding it by watering it nutrients and that so it's physical body physical part of the plant will grow with that but obviously like with anything in animism everyone and everything has a physical part and an energetic part so the physical plant you're watering the energetic part you're programming to pull energy from that depressed person in their aura and that so that's that's a simple one i think that works quite well a lot of people would say can't really bugger that up can you <laughs> Well, no, the end of day, it's not going to fix the, it's mm. not going to fix the oozing because yeah. that's going to continue yeah. happening. What it so is doing is, continues, is but... lighting it off, hopefully yeah. long enough for them to see light, mm. you know, clearing away some of the smog to allow them to possibly see the light is, yeah. is going to be a lot more effective than sending light into a dark space that's mm. just not not going to be big enough for yeah. them to see and even if they did would they be inclined to follow said light like you know whereas actually like i say put you pulling away with this kind of sponge me metaphor kind of magic where you just kind of okay well if i keep clearing the dirt uh, hopefully at some point uh, they'll be able to see clear enough that they might be able to pull themselves out of that part because at the end of the day particularly with depression that is a place that it doesn't matter what you're doing outside of that you don't have any control over what's going on inside mm. so at that point it's you're trying to make that as hospitable you know hospitable as possible that they can get to meet you at that halfway point uh, and then like i said for me it's whatever you can do to strengthen that link so that they feel your presence mm. So that's that's the part Astrally that I was trying to get at. Slapping them around the face might not be the best bit. No, but how that warmth of knowing that somebody is there if I wanted to reach out is the sort of thing that you should be doing. Mm. So yeah, complex it's next on your agenda. Like this, and complex things are going to need a multi-pronged approach. But what those prongs are and how many of them there are, how many different things that you use and do, is really going to depend on you and your ethics. Like some people, I wouldn't think twice about making some sort of a tree plant spell or sponge spell to pull away that negativity. What I would have to think about is, am I going to manipulate that person magically to get better? Am I going to start putting positive thoughts in their head? Am I going to do the old poppet spell where you open up the person's head after it's consecrated, open up the poppet mm -hmm. and put thoughts in? Because that's ethical kind of like, well, you're forcing that. Are you creating, yeah. are you creating the environment for that person to help themselves? Or are you doing it for them? And really that's an ethical kind of dilemma, isn't it? 
that people have yeah. to be and it also it comes down again to choice you know at that point if they're not the ones choosing to leave said space um then there's more opportunity for it to go back there because they haven't made that choice so you force something to happen there is always more opportunity for that to rebound back yeah. to them being in that position again which obviously you don't want to happen so what's easier is you know it's the uh, you know taking a horse to water can't make it drink situation of where you can force it to go there it doesn't mean you're going to necessarily make anything better no um, but there is the sort of witch that would take their head and push it down to yeah the water you will drink and keep it and there until, until they, drown. they start a drowning and a drinking and that and then pull it up and say i'm gonna do that again unless you drink so again depends on your ethics so that's kind of a nice approach that's a nice thing that's a healing but you know healing with mental health healing with depression healing with physical ailments all that sort of thing with family members we enjoy and we like is one type of a magic but there are lots of other ways that you would help situations so let's take a stereotypical one you've got a close friend so not a family member but a close friend that you consider to be family that person has an abusive partner an abusive other half and that person isn't being a fed on like with the psychic vampirism that we talked about on the binding magic that kind of thing no witchcraft live you speak. as a magical practitioner of the person aren't being asked to get involved but what you are hearing is your friend that you care a lot about telling you some awful stories about their partner and what you're also doing is seeing when they're together that he or she might you know say derogatory things nasty things be quite controlling maybe even physically abusive that kind of thing and you as a magical practitioner might have to think okay it might be okay for a mundane because a mundane mug or whatever they all they can do is phone the cops and that won't really get them anywhere because there's no evidence and stuff but as a magical practitioner as a magical practitioner and a witch you've got more power than that you could do something about it and deciding on your attack plan what you want to do i think is more of an ethical question than really a practically magical question because again it's how far you're doing yeah that, you're prepared to you're go with that. so how far if that was you if you were the witch and it was happening to someone that you cared about would you get involved and how far would you go it's it's a tricky one um because there are with these they're they're always far more complicated than things appear um and it's whether or not you can grasp enough of it mm. to make make a positive impact so you know because there are lots of and like what we talked about the weekend with psychic vampires is if that's the sort of situation that you've got where this isn't just a you know repetitive spat or a, a bad you know um, you know it's quite easy to categorize into bad guy or oh well we, we you know we don't quite understand the situation you know is it a how much of this is one per one side of the two parties um and actually having a full enough understanding of the what is going on um if you do and you're able to establish that much of an inf information in order to make that a fair enough answer you've got to understand um what what is going on what's what's the intricacies of it um and then like i say if you get to the understanding that well actually it looks like it is a psychic vampire situation that then gives you enough information to kind of go okay um i've got to be careful here that that should be sending up flags mm. of how do i deal with this situation because then you're starting to talk about vampirism and obviously the reason is that with that you're talking about uh you know um food <laughs> you do you know and and feeder you're talking about you know uh predator and prey and at that point that is a very different dynamic to you know they're just not suitable for each other um and actually it's half a dozen of one and and six of another is you're going from that from that phase to there's a feeding situation here which means that one of them is the food source and one of them is feeding, mm. which means 
you either you know there is danger with removing the food source because then you've got a starving you know a, a starving animal that needs feeding and then you know like we said at the weekend those sorts of things where you're starting to think going oh, kind of okay i can't just remove it um equally can i just starve it until it moves off to another food source like do you know what i mean are, how involved are you willing to get is this about removing the friend and actually just leaving the monster off to go and feed on something else are or are you actually trying to just you know are you going to end it and just kind of go well he's gone now and he's not anybody's problem at this point um and you know we have our rule of don't affect people for more than one lifetime well that's that's affecting one lifetime what's they'll just go back into yeah. the the cycle and and come back out the next end so you know in a lot of ways that to me is the simplest solution um but then you kind of go oh well, actually there's children involved and of family members and what impact does that have on their family just because he's a bad apple that you know he or she is a bad apple doesn't mean that the family deserve the hurt of that do you get what i mean so they're kind of like they're just there's layers upon layers of this you know magical onion arrangement uh, in which case you know how far are you willing to go and is it too complicated for you to find a solution yeah. um because that's you know that's what involves is being able to stand away and be objective enough to see how these things all connect and when it's family and friends that's very difficult to do um it's yeah. also very difficult because you've normally got a information source coming from one place which is often the victim of the arrangement which means that view is distorted in itself um so yeah anyway which, i think which we've got is a question. strange because from the people that i've met okay with similar situations the person that's really being victimized and abused will stick up for the predator yeah but there are some where it's actually just something minor and it's more like a lover's t quip tiff and a lover's quarrel and that kind of thing and actually they've been just as abusive as the other person and they're the one going oh no this person's an asshole this person's horrible yeah. get them get them do your killing curse thing liam go and get them and you're kind of like yeah. well you know but remember from the witch's perspective as a witch you are always interfering from if you are a witch no matter you what you magic, do you come from the perspective that you know best you are going to decide how things play out because you're the one with the magic you're the one with the power and if you're using that power you're the one that is clearly deciding i'm not happy with this so i'm going to change it um yeah. i think we've got a question so it's a question there ethical issues with putting positive thoughts into someone's head are mostly sting stealing their chance to grow but similarly isn't there an ethical issue with binding an abuser and convincing their victim they're changed when they will just start up again if your magic ends in a way stealing their chance to leave and grow and empower so that's an interesting one. I think uh, Lauren's picked up on a couple of points that we've kind of made. But at the same time, I'll just reiterate the point that from the from you as a witch's perspective, because you are a witch, you're someone with power. You are essentially playing God. You have the power and will the power of a god or goddess. Therefore, you make the rules. If you is your ethics are the only ones that matter, because you're the yeah. one with the power. And these you're people the one doing the work different ethical concerns and stuff like that. But ultimately, if you don't like that predator and you think they're a predator and don't deserve to live, if you've got the power to a reach out and a snuff them, smite them, you've got the power to do that. You've decided to do that. It's a case of you as a witch and as a person saying, how do I want this to pan out? And then working the appropriate types of magic to get to that outcome. And a lot of that's going to depend on you having a serious thought you know, serious talk with yourself as to how you want things to play out. But also, it's going to be to do with the magical tools you have in your magical toolbox. If you're good with psychic work and div divination and that, you're going to be able to get the full story, more information. If you're just mm. doing a little bit of tarot reading and stuff like that, and you kind of say, 
well, this person has a psychopathic trait, it's like, you know, a little bit of psychopathy going in there. He's just manipulating this person, you know, so and I don't like that. But, you know, are you coming to the right conclusions that relies on you to get a psychological profile of the people, both of them or more of them? Mm -hmm. You need to be good with psychic work to be able to do that. Similarly, you need to have the creativity to be able to deal with things and change things as well. Mm -hmm. So and like and this... like Lauren's getting to is the fact that actually this is a progression thing too. Mm. So you you need to understand that to a certain extent, certain things are are set in motion. Mm. Are there for obstacles? Are there for growth? For you know, to opposition is there for you to grow as a person as a, you know. So if you're taking away that potential opportunity. You need to be okay with the fact that okay, well that person is you know has been in that situation for a very long time. The most likelihood after that is they go and find that situation again, um, not intentionally, but you know that that situation is likely to occur again if they've not learned anything from it. So you know part of that planning of how you are going to intervene if you have decided to intervene. Is, is making sure that you understand the consequences of that. And that's where the, the divination and the, the other parts of the spell working, the planning um, and the designing of the spell working uh, is, is you know, paramount in that arrangement. Um, because at the end of the day, there is that, uh, the, both sides of the coin with any situation. Um, and if they've got, you know, if actually part of that is pushing them into the next thing, so it guarantees that the next person they find after they overcome this, they will never actually go anywhere near someone like that ever again. And because they now understand how to get out of there, you know, it's that feed a, you know, uh, feed a man for a day, teach a man to fish, all that, that jargon. Um, so, you know, it is that part of at what point and to what extent should you get involved? Um, you know, and the ethics at the end of the day, it doesn't come to anybody else's ethics, my ethics and Liam's ethics. Yes, they may align a lot of the time, but they're not the we're same. We're both bad, feisty witches, aren't we? You know, we're the feistiest, the feistiest of them all. Yeah. But you just kind of got, you know, there are certain things we are prepared to do. And then I think that leads on beautifully to exactly where Lauren's next comment is. Okay, so not Lauren's next comment. So if anyone has any questions, then feel free to add a comment and we'll see if we can cover. So Lauren says, Liam, can you introduce your transparency, transparency spell into this conversation? Because abuse victims are often really in denial or everyone around them is, and it's a great way to draw attention. Yeah, so ultimately, uh, the transparency spell is a popular one. Um, I don't think it's popular in general out there when you Google how to fix um, yeah. pedophilia or something like that. Normally, it's always a case of some witch says, oh, hex the pedophile, curse the pedophile, this sort of thing. Whereas mm -hmm. I tend to think of things, transparency is quite a good one in order good to weapon. help situations that you're a little unsure of, okay? Or if it's just useful to get someone else to do the brunt of the work, if I'm honest with you. Um, so if I share a little kind of story to take you through my thought process of how I've dealt with situations before. So we all know, and disclaimer, what we're about to talk about now is a not particularly nice. We're gonna be talking about things such as a sexual assault, pedophilia and the like. So you might wanna tune out for the next, well, just tune out for the rest of the episode because if you can't cope with talking about this, then I don't know why you're probably gonna get worse. Because we cover all sorts of stuff. We tell you the real stuff. Um, so there we go, I'm assuming you've gone by now. So. We all know that there are paedophiles in the world. We all know that there are people that rape and sexually assault others. Is not gonna stop anytime soon. Some people have that psychology that they are, you know, they have a predatory nature. They um, are addicted almost to that kind of thing. Some people are sick, yeah? Mm. And it cannot really be cured. 
So we don't make up our mission, Chris, do we, to go out and kind of try and create this kind of utopia because we've uh, watched and observed humans for a fair amount of time now and we've interacted with humans for a fair amount of time given that we are humans. So we kind of see this thing of, well, we're not really going to fix this situation. Could we fix the situation? Well, maybe if you did some big high level magic you might be able to restructure the universe but when in rome behave like a roman does we're going to do a yeah. magic from a um, magical human person's perspective not this godlike right. stuff up here so what we can decide is okay we're not going to go out pedophile hunting and uh making it our mission to uh destroy and kill off all of the rapists and stuff but what we can do is if things are brought to our attention, we might say, do I like that? Am I happy with that going on? So there was a certain situation that was brought to my attention whereby there was uh, two young girls actually that were being sexually assaulted by a, a man in his 50s. And it wasn't great. It wasn't nice. I was aware of that going on because some people had confided that in me it was brought to my attention the two girls in question were scared they didn't want to report it they didn't want to do anything they just wanted the nasty asshole horrible man to go away now from that perspective i as a person will be thinking and i'm being the taking the moral high ground i'm essentially assuming the kind of god role position here of i'm the powerful one I don't like that, I'm going to stop it. Don't forget that, because the morality in that it is one of those things. I'm assuming, well, I'm not really assuming, I'm just saying I have the power <laughs> to smite that bad man. I'm not going to go into the ethics of, am I a goody-goody? Am I doing the good thing? Am I doing the bad thing? Oh, the universe must be good. I'm a good witch. I do good magic. Getting rid of paedophiles is good. I don't give a shit about that. What I care about is there's something that I don't like going on in my vicinity. As a magical practitioner, I can do something about it. Now, the thought process of mine was, one, not a paying client. So I don't want to be using too much effort on it. <laughs> Second is I don't quite know the full extent of the situation that's going on. And yeah. I can't be bothered to be getting the old tarot cards out, looking into my crystal ball and so on and so forth to find out what the simple, you know, what's actually going on. If I did, I would probably see that there isn't very nice things going on. Do I want to see that? Probably mm -hmm. not. It takes this toll dealing with these sorts of cases because I would have to go through what the victim sees and felt. And I don't really want to do that, if I'm honest with you. So the kind of psychic work is, I could do it, but I'm thinking, not today, thanks. So instead, what I would do is, okay, assuming that this thing is going on, the best course of action would be that everyone knows that it's going on, that it draws attention to it. Because things like a rape and pedophilia, not widely accepted. If you cast a transparency spell on this situation, if the victims are lying about it, that will come to light. If those victims are actual victims, that will also come to light. So what you're really doing is an almost kind of foolproof plan of, well, I don't quite know what's going on. I know something's going on. That person's lying or that person's lying. Let's do a transparency spell and see what happens. Because in that situation, a lot of the time, and I've seen this, I have seen this happen, whereby um, people get pulled into the feeling of, oh, that person's evil, that horrible, disgusting paedophile. I am going to hex and curse them and destroy them. And I'm going to kill and curse type thing. I've seen witches do that on innocent people because they've been led astray mm -hmm. with someone saying, oh, that person abused me and they haven't. Well, reputation so, has a lot to answer for. You know, yeah. um, and this is part of the problem with some of these, particularly with, with young girls and whatever. Yeah. You know, some people don't believe them. Mm. Um, you know, or, you know, it perfectly happens because like people are disgusting and some people think it's OK to yeah. go and brand that said person a paedophile yeah. or, you know, an, a nonce or whatever. 
is down to that fact of obviously, you know, unless you are going to invest the time, which is very different when, like we were saying before, is is very different when it's a family member and you feel morally obligated in order to, you know, protect your own uh, blood is thicker than water, all of those things. Um, unless you're a sociopath. Un- yeah, unless you, d- you know. In which case it's all water. <laughs> yeah, it's all water for you, Liam. So, you know, it's one of those of kind of like, whereas this becomes trickier, when you're starting to look at the bigger picture, the wider, uh, you know, societal change, there, you know, you've got to be consider how much can you impact? What are you capable of doing? And also, like Liam said, how much you are willing to get involved in something that is not, you're not obligated to get involved in. So, you know, is a case of, like you say, do you want to relive those moments? Because, you know, any good psychic will tell you the those are the sorts of the things that people that stop people wanting to see anymore mm. um you know actually in a lot of ways i switched my site off a long time ago uh, it's much easier to be objective when you yeah. don't have sight um you know it's one of those one of those parts of you know everybody goes oh i want to be able to see everything like are you sure um because you know those are famous last words um you know and they're the sorts of people that wake up on the ceiling um you know tortured by their own the things they've seen you know ask any any policeman that's worked in those sorts of cases if they wish they hadn't seen the things they've seen you know so it is it is a factor obviously i know liam delivers it in a nonchalant kind of um i don't care method but you know it comes down it comes down to are you prepared to to live with that you know it's bad enough that said victim has to live with that you're not being able to necessarily take that away but at the same time you've got that thought of okay what is the most effective method of actually doing something about this and quite often uh, you know, Lawrence made a good point of uh, making sure we bring that up, is often transparency is what is the most damaging thing to do, is, you know, that's going to have the biggest impact. Oh, okay, well, everybody knows. If everybody knows, then that means it's unlikely that other victims are going to happen. It doesn't fix what's happened already, but it has the potential to affect what may happen in the future. Yeah. Um, well, so... You know. To wrap that case up basically super quickly, the thought process for me, and you need to think about things really, how you really ultimately want you know, the situation to pan out. If I was to do a killing curse or a hex or a curse on the pedophile, that person might have gone away and died or got stuck in a coma or something like that. Might have plucked him up and stuck him in a hell dimension, who knows? We like doing that. We're not allowed to do that anymore due to ethical reasons. <laughs> oh, well, I have to stop. When yeah. you but didn't give me that memo. Yeah, but, you know, multiple lifetimes and stuff like that. Okay. Eternity, Chris, counts as multiple lifetimes, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know. The jury might still be out on that, but maybe we can get away with it. But basically, you've got to think of, well, okay. I keep wanting to say his name. I shouldn't say his name. Um, no. The pedophile dies, yeah? The victims don't necessarily get a huge amount of closure. They certainly don't get the help they need because they don't confide in no. anyone. They carry that all them li- all their lives. Yes, he's the person's died, so he can't do it again. Okay. But if I did the transparency spell like I did, not only does it bring light to the situation, so the lynch mob got him, and they did. He's in prison now. And they don't take too kindly to uh, kitty fiddlers in prison right so he is being punished but also the beauty of that kind of a spell is they super easy to perform transparency spells it takes a lot less effort than a killing curse i can tell you more economical on the old energy bill but also because light's been cast on that situation people are paying attention to it and people are noticing oh you worked with him did he ever touch you? And that, what has started to happen then was the person said, yes, yes, it did happen. So you've got the victims getting to a certain extent, 
not necessarily closure because you wouldn't necessarily be able to make that go away but what you can do is when someone's caught like that when the transparency is a working and everyone sees them the authorities get involved they investigate when there's an investigation they look at the past they find other victims they give those victims the counseling and the support that they need if you was to kill him maybe it would have manifested where he's found in a couple of days time having had a heart attack and no one looks into it all of those victims might still be out there and be worried that they might they might bump into him and he's actually dead all that sort of stuff you need to be careful mm -hmm. of so seeing as we're already on the slightly uh, darker subjects and such let's kick things up a notch and let's talk about PTSD because we kind of covered it because this PTSD is kind of a another we're talking about mental health and stuff like that you're also talking about condition a mental health condition that's misunderstood by a lot of people that people really suffer with and that is one of those things from what I've seen the people that try and help you the most and are there for you the most those are the people that if you have a condition like that you can end up pushing away so if you're a witch and you have someone that's close to you that has ptsd maybe they were in afghanistan or something like that and they wake up every night a screaming and a you know that sort of thing using magic to help with that what approaches would you take because we're not really looking at a magical cure we're not looking at making a cancer mm -hmm. go away or something we're talking about someone that's gone through a traumatic or several traumatic events that is kind of fractured their psyche to a certain extent well you're talking about emotional reconditioning and mm -hmm. i you know i think any sort of work like that is really dangerous yeah. um so because you know it's it's one of those things again like trying to fix psychosis it's one of those things best left with the professionals mm. uh, to a certain extent the the question is whether or not that comes down to a having must have that is a no-go for the beginner um definitely well is and, it pal is it a no -go well, for the beginner because i think from my perspective, it depends on what you're talking about in terms of help yeah because you know I, what i'm saying is a no go in you're not going to fix that no um but so how far are you actually prepared to go again um it's because actually see when it comes to magic at the end of the day and also just because you have the power to do that kind of work doesn't mean that you would want to and it doesn't mean that it would be worth your while doing it if there are other ways in which that person can do that so for example, if you were a beginner, a super simple spell that you could do would be some sort of magnetic spell in order to attract the person with PTSD to the resource and help that they need. Yeah. You've got to think yeah. less about, oh, let's do a healing candle and repair their psychology mm -hmm. and they'll wake up all happy. It's not necessarily going to be like that. That's not necessarily the magical route that you would take that something simple like doing attraction spells to attract them to in which case areas, is, counseling, is why anything I'm, like that. Yeah, is why I'm saying that it's a no-go mm. in actually trying to treat, mm. um, you, know, it, you know, making sure they get to the places that they need to get to, or you're making sure that they get to not just that, but actually if there is an answer mm. to it, sometimes it's a it you know it might be one moment it might be as simple as one moment and actually coming into terms with that moment doesn't necessarily involve uh, you know what is currently happening which is anything that triggers that moment is bringing it all back again mm. um it might be attracting them to not necessarily the help but answers that they're after um some of those answers might not be available through resources and may just be that they need to get to somewhere or something or someone um so you know there are there are lots of ways but again what what i would say is with those sorts of situations it comes down to the ability of the the practitioner 
um, their diagnosing skill. Um, you know, is there a part of this that isn't physical? Um, is this, you know, is it actually a gin or or some other kind of um, entity that's actually causing this to happen? At that point, you're starting to go to, you know, higher level understanding and diagnosis skill. Um, and, and that's the case in which I'm saying that is not for the faint hearted or for the beginner. Um, whereas actually, you know, like you say, trying to direct to them to the right kind of help, uh, you know, and not selecting the kind of help, but, you know, in a slightly more catch all kind of what does this person need? How do I get what this person needs to them? And this goes for lots of different kind of mental health and physical health problems. Sometimes that's all somebody needs is somebody to put some breadcrumbs out them out there for them to follow. Um, and again, this comes down to what can I do and what should I do will come down to, you know, deciding what's actually going to help the person. You know, some people look at this and go, how do I fix it? Well, often the answer is they need to fix it because they need to get there. Um, what you need to do is facilitate uh, any kind of healing work is about facilitating that process uh, and getting them there. Um, people go straight to the how do I heal it? Yeah. Well, no, what you need what to do is facilitate. Don't yeah. Yeah. So we will cover um, using magic to help with mental health issues and stuff like that, because we're doing a healing on the witchcraft live facebook group where we have our video archives and stuff um we are doing a healing module and we'll slowly start releasing more and more healing magic orientated videos mental health is a complicated one but one thing i will say about magic very often from a beginner's perspective is they think you do the right spell at the right time mm -hmm. and you wave your hand and it all fixes in reality we tend to think of the magical arts more like we think of modern medicine you go to your doctor most of the time they'll diagnose it correctly and know what course of action to take but it is but, a course of treatment but it's, a it's course not of a treatment. take this blue pill and it'll all go away yeah and also they're not always able to diagnose it properly and it may take lots of different attempts with different things to get to the root cause of the problem and other professionals that's, yeah that's why we're not great fans of the one hit one one uh you know one hit wonder kind of spell books do this spell and it works because you can end up making the problems worse on such with spell work and magical work because we're using the term magical work because there's more to magic than just spell casting is a case of working on the bits that you understand so like with uh, Chris's example and the example we kind of give about PTSD, you might not understand how PTSD works. You might not understand what needs to happen. What you do understand is that that person needs help. So that is what you use your magic to work towards. If you're trying to heal someone with a medical condition, you might not understand fully how that medical condition is working and that sort of thing but pick off bits that you do understand and use your magic to help with those. Of course, the better you are at diagnosing and the more knowledgeable and experienced you are, the bigger things you can do because the more points of the matter you can pick up and help. So don't try going for the whole thing. One other thing about um, mental health things that I will say, there's a quite a controversial, and that people get uncomfortable oh with is that a lot of the times when it comes to things like um, if you're born with mental disabilities and physical disabilities to a certain extent, things like Down syndrome, people see that as you were born that way, okay, and they won't try to correct that. People with things oh, like careful. PTSD, that's a word that won't go well. Well, things like PTSD. Correct. PTSD, 
that's something where someone someone goes through their life some sort of event or a couple of events happen and then they kind of change something changes and that ptsd kind of takes hold and people think oh they broke there i need to fix them and that's a very 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 dangerous thing to take that kind of approach when it comes to magic and in general helping someone with mental health that's why we're making it such a big thing when it comes to obviously discussing it on the witchcraft live facebook group and trying to break things down but when it comes to magic if you don't remember anything else diagnose the bits and make sure that you have a list of things that you understand and just go for those bits don't try to affect things that are too complicated that you don't understand because that's when all these healers and the like get into trouble isn't it chris they bite off more than they can chew and make the make it all worse you know but is there anything else you want to cover for family feuds and for that kind of a thing well we don't have really any more time less as questions um and we'll do our best to answer those we'll go into extra time for that um, yeah, so if but you yeah. have any more questions, let us but, know. If not, then we'll obviously end it. Yeah. Um, but to yeah. tidy up what you said, <laughs> yeah. to tidy up what you said, essentially understanding when to get involved, when not to get involved, and not making those assumptions. Mm. So, you know, Liam's example there is, is that, that people consider some things that aren't a disability to be one in the sense mm. that they say well that's that's broken and it will always be broken that's just how it was made um and other people would consider like you said um with ptsd we'll see well that is something that has broken mm. in transit kind of situation and neither of them necessarily need to be fixed mm. and it's not necessarily your place to fix um what it might be is you helping them facilitate you know it's it's what can you do to actually make this easier for them to get to wherever they need to get to um and i think that's the big difference is understanding that you know one do you understand either um and if you don't you probably shouldn't be touching it so if you don't understand that person's condition whether it be temporary new or always been there if you don't understand it you probably shouldn't be getting involved with it mm. however what you can do if you feel the need to help is to do something helpful um, and that is often facilitating something that is part of the process for them um, you are not necessarily going to be able to just wave your magic wand and it be fixed um and also some of these things aren't something you should be fixing um you know and aren't broken they may appear broken to you mm. that doesn't mean something is actually broken um so like i said unless you actually understand what is going on then you shouldn't probably be getting involved with it no don't get involved with things you don't necessarily understand and if you do be prepared to really fuck up and of course, the most important thing, buy something from the thothwitchcraft.com shop. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for another week and another edition of the Feisty Witches. And that's it. We'll see you next week at eight o'clock on Wednesday. Week. So for some of the shenanigans. Faust. If you're tired of all the neo-pagan claptrap that's on the internet and want to see some real witchcraft, please subscribe to the Foff TV YouTube channel. If you really want to kick things up a notch, try clicking the No Holds Barred podcast link.